Well, nearly a thousand people shared a man's picture of one of the state's most talked about killers who escaped from custody over the weekend. But his run from the law did not last long. Jake Aiken is accused of killing this boy in Afreda. In 2003, Craig Sorger was autistic. He had just turned 13 when he was stabbed to death in a city park. Now, the boy on the left, one of his killers, Jake Aiken, was just 12 years old himself at the time. He and another 12-year-old were the youngest ever to be tried for murder in the state of Washington. On the right is what Aiken looks like now. Hello, everybody. Will I be back again? I know, no videos, been a while. And I'm not going to lie and say that I'm probably coming back at this point, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I've attempted to like work on three other videos coming to this point, so it's not really a matter of being, I don't know, kind of MIA or lazy. I've had a lot of other things come up in my life, like getting a job and stuff, but I still enjoy making these videos and I'd like to continue. The other videos I worked on kind of got scrapped just because I wasn't really happy with what they were or the stuff I was talking about. It just wasn't really something I was actually interested in, more or less something I was going to try to do to, you know, catch up on the trends and get a little bit more viewership. But uh, in all honesty, I don't care about that. Uh, I like to make the videos I like to make, and if I get a million views or a hundred views, it doesn't matter as long as people enjoy them. Today we're going to be looking at some of the youngest killers in America. These kids are named Evan Savoy and Jake Eakin which were some of the youngest murder defendants that had been tried as adults in Washington state history, both aged at 12 years old. Craig Sorger was a 13-year-old boy who was autistic, who had special education classes in Ephrata, Washington, which is a small town with around 6,000 people. On February 15th of 2003, Evan and Jake would ask Craig to be able to hang out as they had hung out with him several times in the past. Craig's mother allowed her son to go with the boys, but told him that Craig wasn't going to be able to play long. According to Jake's later testimony, the boys would go to a nearby park where Evan would ask Craig to feel the ground and see if it was wet, instructing him to touch the ground and count to ten. While Craig was on his knees, Jake would drop a rock the size of a basketball on his neck, and then repeatedly attack and stab Craig. Jake could testify that he would also have beaten Craig and hit him on the head using a fallen tree branch and they eventually would leave Craig lying motionless on the ground. As night fell, Craig's mother would begin to look for him as he hadn't returned as quickly as she had instructed. When searching, she visited Evan's residence where she found that Evan and Jake had already returned home, though Craig had been nowhere to be found. His parents would then call 911 where, while joined by Jake and his parents and members of the Afarta Police Department, the police would soon discover Craig's body. When questioned later that day, Jake and Evan would both claim that they were climbing trees and playing tag in the park with Craig until around 4.30 when Craig would go home. But then they quickly would change their stories and say that they had saw Craig fall from a tree. Police would find no evidence that Craig had fallen from a tree and the coroner would point out stab wounds on the body, most likely caused by a knife. Craig's autopsy revealed that in addition to being Beaten, he had been stabbed five times in the chest and in the torso, at least 34 times in the head and neck. Although Jake and Evan would claim innocent, they would be charged with first degree murder and tried as adults. In February of 2005, the Washington Supreme Court would upheld the decision to try the boys as adults, declining to hear the case. The youngest murder defendants tried as adults in the state since 1931. After 26 months in jail awaiting trial, Jake would confess to his role in the killing. He pleaded guilty to second degree murder by complicity and agreed to testify as a witness against Evan. Prosecutors agreed to request a relatively light sentence of eight years in prison in exchange for a guilty plea. But the Superior Court judge would rule that there is no mitigating factors to allow such a sentence and would instead give him a mid-range sentence of 14 years. On April 29th of 2006, Evan would be convicted of first-degree murder, where he was sentenced to 26 years in prison, the maximum sentence that could be imposed. In 2011, his conviction would be overturned on appeal based on the judge's closure of parts of the trial to the public and having an appointed lawyer for the victim's family who intervened in the trial. 
After the prosecutors would announce their intention to stage a second trial, Evan would plead guilty to a second degree murder. In March of 2014, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. On June 12th of 2016, Jake would escape from work release while serving the final months of his sentence, where he was quickly captured by U.S. Marshals two days later in Rapid City, South Dakota. He was then returned to custody and his sentence was extended due to his escape attempt. Jake has been released and is now an anti-abortion activist in Eastern Washington. Evan, who was incarcerated in Airway Heights Correction Center, was now released as of June of 2020. I've tried to record this a few times, but most of them I've been a little bit too emotional for my liking, so I want to get it, you know, kind of straight and clear. Obviously, I think uh, most people will share this opinion. I really wish that these two people got life in prison and not the life that is normally given by courts. I mean, I hope they spend the rest of their lives in a box locked somewhere very far away where no one gets to interact with them and no one has to suffer from seeing them again. I hope Craig's family is compensated very heavily, and I hope that his family is having a better life at this point, even though I know it's very difficult given the loss of a loved one. Jake, who is now out of prison, uh, is now an anti-abortion activist, which honestly just puts the cherry on the shitty cake that he is as a human. I think it is very sad that the maximum that could be given was 26 years. I'm happy that instead of in like a lot of other cases of like Nathaniel Barjona, where they didn't really crack down as heavily, I'm glad this judge attempted to crack down as heavily as he could, even if it didn't end up actually being the overall sentence. I hope you guys managed to enjoy this video. This was very tough for me to work on. As I've said before, I did feel very emotional because it's just something that makes me so sad to hear about such a young child have their life taken away from them by someone who has no respect for other people or other humans. I hope Craig's family is compensated very heavily and I hope that they do end up having a better life at this point and I'm very sorry for them. I'm very tired of hearing people that focus more on the killers rather than the victims because at the end of the day these are humans that had their life taken from them. So please if you get the chance just Remember that when you see true crime videos and stuff like this, these are real people that had their lives ruined. Instead of just thinking of it like, you know, how TV shows kind of over-dramatize these type of situations, just remember that these are people.